Today we will take a look at how you can combine features of a bunch of different animals to create your own unique 3D model. Welcome to part 3 of our creature sculpting series. So far we've learned all essential tools to sculpt the primary shape of our 3D model. Now it's time to get into some secondary shapes or smaller details. If you want to know how we got to this point, make sure to watch parts 1 and 2. Or if you just want to learn something, stay tuned. We will directly start to increase the resolution of our mesh as we now go one detail level further. The goal is to quickly iterate over each individual body part and sculpt only as much as the polycount allows. Usually I don't do every part from start to finish, but rather one little step at a time, then jump to the next one and so on. The advantage is that you can react quickly if something does not fit together and adjust it. Let's start with the nose. The shape of the nose is very similar to that of your mo eh, a pig. Since my model still has very few polys, I will just sculpt the general shape of the nose and move on. The rest follows later. Not much to say about the ears, simply a hole like many reptiles have. The eyes can be used to influence the appearance of the creature a lot. My creature should be big and dangerous, but also cute. And what is better suited here than the eyes of a cockadier? Innocent or even curious when wide open, cute and friendly when slightly closed. And by the way, the whole sculpting process is too long to take a voiceover for YouTube. This is why I fast forward and only explain my thought process on important aspects. If you want to see the whole sculpting process, you can either check out the time-lapse video or watch the uncut full process video on my Patreon page. The links are in the video description. Back to your mom. I mean, a hippo is the reference for the neck and the jaw. Wrinkles, fat, thick skin. For the spikes on the back, I stick to the horns of a deer. Horns and other stuff that sticks out of your body are often surrounded by skin that grows along with it. You can also observe this on your fingernails, for example. And as I mentioned before, I jump back and forth between the parts and sculpt them little by little. Here's a wrinkle above the eye, then some wrinkles above the nose, then another few wrinkles on the neck inspired by the hippo. An easy way to add wrinkles is use the draw sharp brush to lower a few lines and then the draw brush to raise the skin between them. A good way to suggest anatomy is to use the clay strip brush and smooth over it. Here I use the clay strips to indicate the rib cage, which I adopt from the Reno. Clay strips add texture to your model, making it less boring in plastic. Let's move on to the hooves. These are heavily lean on those of a pig. Same here, layer by layer. Start with the shape, then the details. And on to the legs, where I switch from a pig to a Reno. Same for the back legs. Now as we are getting more and more into detail, we have to increase our resolution on some parts. But increasing the poly count comes with a cost. Performance. So we have to utilize another blender tool. With the help of dynamic topology, you can increase the resolution only on specific parts, to not slow down your system. You can activate it for brushes like the draw brush by turning on this check mark. Let's examine what constant detail with a resolution of 200 does. When I use a brush now, the number of polygons change in this area. And I can sculpt fine details without increasing the resolution on the whole mesh. I will use dynamic topology with a resolution of about 80 to increase the detail on the eyes one level further. And continue to do so on the other parts. The ears. The nose. Okay, so far we have abused your mo- I pick, reptile, cockatiel, a hippo, a deer and a reno. Now we need something for the mouth. I want a slobbering one where you can see the gums. The mouth or face is definitely the hardest part of sculpting a figure or a character. Not only is there a lot of detail, but it is also a part that is looked at most of all. Which is why you have to put extra effort into it. Let's add a tongue. Therefore, I'll create a cube, add a subdivision modifier with level 5 to give it extra polys to sculpt, scale it down and move it into the mouth. In order to sculpt it now, we need to hide the upper jaw. 
On the last video we talked about masking, but not about the mask modifier. You can use the mask modifier to hide specific vertex groups. So, go into edit mode, select the vertices you want to hide, create a new vertex group, and assign the vertices to it. Add the mask modifier, select the group and invert it. You may have noticed I almost only used the draw brush, draw sharp and grab. So don't get trapped into buying brushes somewhere, you don't need them. Unless um, I want to sell you some. Inverting the vert in, in the vert the vert the vert the curve. Inverting the vertex group in the mask modifier, I can sculpt the gum. And lastly, let's fake some anatomy by using the clay script brush again to indicate some muzzles. And after some smoothing, it actually looks like I've clue about anatomy. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we did it. We finished the most difficult step, creating a 3D model, sculpting the final shape of the whole model. And as one of my viewers commented, it all started with a cube. Now we have to add the very small details, which requires millions of polygons. And to not melt our system, we have to retopologize the model and use a technique which allows it to do so. Or use ZBrush. So, I hope you had fun and peace out and don't forget.